This video is mostly about the MT3608. So if you've seen these type of DC to DC boost converters before, uh, then you'll know a little bit about what they're capable of. Um, so they come like this, is the standard uh, converter that you just get uh, for you know around 80 cents or something like that, plus uh, whatever freight. And um, yeah, they're, a pretty impressive little beast. They've got, they're based on this uh, six pin MT3608 uh, and that is a, um, uh, well, you can put an input of around, I think it's between two and 20 volts and an output uh, on the data sheet anyway stated at around the 28 volts. Um, so it basically has a couple of capacitors either side, an inductor, uh, there is a Schottky diode there, and then we have uh, one resistor here, and we have a variable resistor here. And the idea is that through this voltage divider, we can set whatever voltage comes out. So typically, for instance, uh, you could have, let's say, uh, 10K here, uh, and you could have, let's say, 240K there. And if you do the numbers based on the formula and data sheet, you end up with 15 volts out of here. So, um, yeah, we should give that a bit of a try, I guess. So, um, all right, so zoomed out now, and um, I've got a little battery pack here with a couple of, I think, some nickel metal hydrides. So, that should be around two and a half uh, volts if they're charged. So, uh, let's do that. So that's on, turn this on, and we've got yeah, 2.5 volts, so that should be fine. So what we might try and do is maybe solder this up to the input. I'll just turn that off again, and uh, we'll get that soldered up. So let's have a look. Uh, let's see, tin this side. And we'll tin this side. And then just connect that. All good. Okay, so we'll turn that on. Now, there has been some interesting stories about these things going kaput when you've got, oh, let's turn it around this way, actually, it might make more sense. If it'll hold, put some weight on it. Uh, yes, uh, there have been some stories about this going kaput when um, you know the, the conditions aren't right. For instance, uh, if you try and treat it as a uh, a buck as opposed to a boost, then there are some issues. Um, so I'll, I'll leave a link to that on the blog anyway, so you can see. So let's turn it on. Hopefully, there's no smoke coming out of it, and we'll test the output. So we've got. Uh, yeah, so the other way around, here we go. So 12 volts coming out. So then we'll try and maybe bump that up to 15. All right, let's try this with a smaller screwdriver. Oh, that's a bit better. I still don't like these though, they're very unfriendly compared to the ones that have the knobs on the side. That's going the wrong way. So anti-clockwise increases the output. And we'll try to get up to 15 volts. Not too bad. And of course we should better go all up to 28. And on the other side coming in, Yeah, 2.5. So 2.5 volts and 15. I guess the question is, uh, you know, what does that look like in terms of the actual voltage? Now, is it stable? So somewhere around here, I've got an oscilloscope. Let me just go and grab that. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to see. Now, when I say oscilloscope, 
Yeah, I mean this guy who uh, does a bit of a job. He's all right, but he's not going to win a Nobel Prize. But we'll just have a quick look and see if there is any ripple. So 15 volts coming out. What I'll do is I'll put one lead on this side. There we go. And one on this side. Right. And what have we got here? It's actually not too bad. I'll turn this off. We don't need that. So it says 13.7 volts. That's reading a little lower than the 15. Um, but, and I can see there that there's a little bit of noise. Let's just go down and see if we get that a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, no, it's not really showing an awful lot of ripple at that stage. So actually that's a pretty clean, a pretty clean signal. So that's not too bad. Uh, as near as I can measure it with that thing anyway, which isn't great. So anyway, uh, the next thing is to maybe try and recreate the actual circuitry here and um, use like an, the MT3608 uh, in its um, bare form. So to that end, uh, I did order some MT3608 chips. So not that you'll be able to, I'll try and get a, a close up of that, but you can see the six uh, pins there. Let's see if we can I'll try and refocus on that. No, it's, it's not going to enjoy that too much. It's focusing on the oscilloscope behind it. But anyway, um, yeah, so that is the six-pin chip there. And uh, I'll put on the um, the blog and also probably on this video as well the circuit diagram that I'm going to use, which is from the data sheet of that. And because it's difficult to get to that chip, um, what I've actually been able to do is to solder that onto one of these SOP to DIP8 adapters and use it that way. So it's not, strictly speaking, um, you know, <laughs> a terrific thing to do, but um, it works. So I'll show you that as well. Right, so there you can see the MT3608 via a SOP to DIP adapter on the breadboard. And I've just put the two side by side so we can just track the components so that you can see the two chips. Uh, you can also see the capacitors. So um, now I think they're supposed to be 22 microfarad. I think I'm using 10s um, just to, you know, just to, to get the circuit going really. Um, and then you've got your inductor. So I'm using a 6.8 microhenry radial inductor. Uh, then you've got your Schottky diode and uh, your voltage divider. So I'm using 10K uh, going to ground there and a 240K to get the same uh, 15 volts out. So that's what it looks like. Let's hook it up and see if we can't get a similar voltage out of this uh, homegrown version as opposed to the module. All right, so we need some power. Um, couldn't be bothered desoldering the, the little one, but I do have here uh, a couple of also, um, well, these are uh, lithium uh, 18650s. Uh, I think they're normally around the four-ish volts each. Actually, we could probably test that. So let me just connect this up and see what we've got with the two of them in series. Yeah, 8.3 volts, and I think we said with that we'd go through to 15. Uh, so let's plug that in. So that's our positive, that's our ground. And then what we're looking for is 15 volts. So I'll just put that on ground here. And then on our shot key coming out, yeah, 14.85. So that's pretty good. So the homegrown circuit is working fine as well. Uh, so we might, um, well, what I'll do is now I'll, I'll go back to this guy here and wind him down to 12 and see if we can't get him doing something useful like writing up, uh, lighting up a heap of LEDs. And then I might as well point out while I'm here too that uh, after having bought these modules, uh, which actually goes back probably two or three years, uh, and also um, receiving the ISCs, which I've got here, uh, amazingly as part of the, um, the Paduk 
project uh, is um, voltage regulation and it, it, it actually uses so this chip here which is the MT3608. So it, it's at the heart. And I've had a lot of actual trouble with uh, this uh, programmer, uh, including supplying the correct voltage to the uh, to the chips here for programming. And I think some of that has to do with the components that are around it, but it may also be uh, my understanding or misunderstanding of what's going on with the chip. So um, yeah, that's a nice collision of, uh, of ideas there or projects that I've been working on. But um, let me go back to this guy here. Remember that I think we've got 2.5 volts come in. See if we can drive a, a 12 volt LED strip. So I'll turn that back on. Yeah, in fact, it's been on the whole time. I'll get rid of this one here, the homegrown version. Just test that that is still, get rid of that guy. Um, yeah, we're still getting our 12 volts out of this. And, and that's actually 15, that's right. So let's wind it back so we don't blow up the LEDs. We'll go back down to 12. Yep, 11.77. There you go, 12.14 should be good. And uh, LED strip, LED strip, do I have some? Oh yes, there we go. So this is a cheap 12 volt LED strip. I think it's just, I think it's just warm whites actually. Well, we'll find out when we plug in if it goes at all. Uh, so let's do that. This way around. And we have. Oh. Actually, red. There you go. Or is it that it's not powering it enough? That's what I don't know. So I'll try another 12 volt power supply and see if we're getting the same output. I do buy strange LEDs, that's possibly it is just a red one, or that it's not supplying enough power, although I'm not seeing any smoke coming out, so that's a good thing. Uh, let's try this on another supply. Here we have, turn this off and get him out of the way. Another switching power supply that I commonly use that you've probably seen before. And uh, if you have a look at this, this is the pot here. That's a much better pot. You see, you can just wind that with your hands. That is much nicer. So let's wind him up. 12 volts is good. And let's see if, that's, if that is in fact a red one. Or that MT3608. Yep, that is red. That's unexpected. A little bit brighter with the power coming through from those uh, two uh, 18650s but uh, yeah you can see the voltage drop actually look at that voltage drop so this does pull quite a lot out so that's probably why the other one was um, was a little naff but anyway uh, that's the MT3608 that's the uh, the homegrown circuit working and the module as well and uh, I guess next time we'll see it uh, as usual it'll be it'll have something to do with that um, with the uh, Paduk programming project so we'll, we'll see you then